first thing was that eye that you guys asked me about in the beginning. His right eye had always just been like an overly lazy eye because he doesn't have the occipital lobe. His eye came into place. He just opened his eyes one morning. His eye was in place and he was looking left and right. And what did you, did you say, Gramps? Did you, did you like, who noticed it? Was it your, your husband? Was it you? I noticed and I obviously told Gramps, but I would say through this entire process, I've never really gotten overly excited because I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm essentially using my kid as an experiment. So it's like, okay, his eyes moving, but is he going to start having a seizure? You know, so you're just, you're on your toes. You're like, okay. And I recorded everything almost as though this was a traditional scientific experiment. So two days, his eyes moving around, starting to move his fingers, which he couldn't even do that. And starting to move that. Then he's starting to move his head around. Two months from that time, he started crawling. And I think the biggest thing there was he was not favoring left over right. And it was really thought that he was going to be paralyzed on the right side, missing so much of his left brain. So crawling, perfectly normal, starts pulling up. And really, I mean, I have two kids older than him. Just It really became this thing where this kid is, this kid is trying to catch up in life almost. 14 months old, he starts walking. And we went to his first- It's not that late. It's not, it's not. Um, we went to his first neurology appointment, follow up with his, with his doctors and his surgeons. And, and the last time they had seen him, he was you know, uh, not very responsive and couldn't do anything. And they told us that it's okay, just keep taking him to therapy, keep giving his medicine. This kid walked into the office and said hi to everybody. And the, all these doctors rushed into his room and they started writing on the board what medicines he's been on and what diet. And I just, I was very solemn and just sat there. I wasn't like, no, 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 you guys didn't do this. It was all me. I didn't do, I didn't do none of that. I didn't say anything. I just sat there and watched them go nuts and, you know, imagine that they've created something. And um, then I just stopped them. I said, you guys, I took him off all medications at seven months old. So I told them, and they were like, what, what, what? And, and they've, they knew who I, I was, you know, at, at that university, and they were colleagues of mine. Um, but they basically, instead of really listening to what I had done, they had basically said, well, wow, he's a miracle. Congratulations, and you don't need us anymore. And that was, he was, you said, how many months old? 14, 14 months? months old. So just a little over one. And now how old, how old is he today? So Macario today is five years old. He is starting kindergarten on Tuesday. Um, he has no developmental deficits and he's no different than any other five-year-old. It's still missing 40% of his brain. So he walks normally? Yep. Talks? Perfectly fine. Sings, actually. <laughs> No difference. No difference. None. That is amazing, right? There's not a lot of things that amaze me. That amazes me. And it would seem pretty clear. Let me ask you this in a different way. Have any doctor said, that's amazing, it's got nothing to do with CBD? You know that, right? Dr. Annabelle, you know it's a miracle. And sometimes you can't explain these spontaneous things and whether you could call it God or the brilliance of the surgeon. I think you've given credit to the surgeon. That the surgeon was brilliant and he spared more of his brain uh, versus less, right? That right. you were actively involved in making sure that enough was left so that would be a shot. But have they ever told you that, you know, sorry, it's just nothing to do with CBD? Yes, I've heard it all. Right. And what do they say? What's the, what do they, you know, what's the basis for them saying that? Do they have a basis? No, you know, nobody really knows that, you know, doctors like to say, a lot of doctors like to say, oh, it's just one of those things. You know, every, every now and then a certain case comes up, someone gets cured of cancer, there's no explanation for it. I mean, this very well could be something that just came up and it's a young developing brain. But how would they explain that it was two days after you began giving them the CBD, giving them the CBD? Right. Maybe one of the medications were, was inhibiting processes that wanted to come out. So good job. Maybe you took him off the right medication. I'm not sure which one of the seven <laughs> was doing that. But um, yeah, there are still a lot of colleagues of mine that don't believe it was a CBD. What 
percentage of your colleagues believe CBD plays no role in this? Um, I'd say about 50-50. 50-50. Mm-hmm. I've opened up a lot of their eyes to wanting to do more research. Mm-hmm. Um, and, hey, you should, you know, look into this more. But they're very, you know, very careful about coming out publicly and saying, man, that's got to be the cannabis. You did it. And... CBD is is a miracle worker.